Number 29, use the standard entropy data in Appendix G to determine the change in entropy for each of the following reactions. All the processes occur at the standard conditions and at 25 degrees Celsius. So we have 2Cu solid plus S gas yields Cu2S solid. Now we want to find that change in entropy, right? Change in entropy is a delta S, right? Delta is the triangle, that means change, S is entropy. And what entropy is, is it's talking about the randomness or the disorder or the chaos in the system. Now you can kind of guesstimate what our delta S value is going to be. Now keep in mind, specifically, we are finding a delta S notch because the degree sign, the notch, you know, on the top, um, is only for standard conditions, which means that we have to use the values in the back of a textbook. And that's what this, this question prompted us. It said, use the standard entropy data in that appendix. And appendix G in this case, it could be a different appendix in your textbook. So we are solving for delta S notch. And we can kind of guesstimate what it's going to be, whether it's positive or negative, by just looking at the states. Now, in this case, we started off with a solid and a gas, and we just went to a solid. Keep in mind that solids are very, 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 very structured, right? But gases, they're kind of like all over the place. Now, if you're taking this into consideration and you're only making something that is very structured, aka a solid, you're losing randomness because you're losing the gas. No more gases on the uh, react the product side. So a decrease in entropy, right? A less random you know, product would give us a negative delta S value. So we're going to guesstimate that we should see a negative value at the end of the day. Now, I did go in the back of the textbook for you to find those S values. So for copper solid, it's 33.15 joules per mole times Kelvin. Sulfur is 167.82 and Cu2S is 120.9. Now, what formula are we going to use with these values? Well, it's pretty simple. It's this formula right here. It's delta S for the whole entire reaction. Rxn means reaction is always equal to the sum. That's this like little symbol here. And we're just adding, right? Sum is addition. We're going to sum up all the products and subtract from the sum of all your reactants. So it's essentially products minus reactants. But we just got to add them up. Now, are these numbers going to be the same or are they going to be different? Well, that's where your uh, coefficients come into play. Now, keep in mind that you had two coppers. There was no coefficient in front of the sulfur. That means that you had one of them. And there was no coefficient in front of the Cu2S. That means you have one of them. For whatever your coefficient is, that's what you're going to multiply by your value. So for example, since you have two coppers, I have to take the 33.15 and times it by two. Since there was only one sulfur, this number is just the same, right? But I just put it there just to show you guys, kind of like have a system. And the same thing for the Cu2S. Since there was only one, it would be one times 120.9, but that would be the same number as well. Now keep in mind, we have to add up the total on both sides. Literally, it's CUS plus sulfur. Literally, plus. So we're going to add those two together. I don't have to add anything on the product side because it's just the CU2S. So that number is the same, 120.9. But now let's go to Calci just to figure out what this summation is. So what I'm going to do on calculator, I'm going to say 33... 0.15. I'm going to times that by 2, and then I'm just going to add it to 167.82. Oop, not 50, 82. There we go. So I get 234.12. These are my new values that I'm going to plug into my equation. So here we go. I got delta S for the whole entire reaction would be products minus reactants. So 120.9 minus the 234.12. Okay. Delta S 
for my whole entire reaction is, drumroll please, let's go to Calci again, 120.9 minus that answer. So I'm going to just grab that. Look how lovely that is. And I get negative 113.22. However, for sig fig purposes, since I only have one sig fig after the decimal here, that's the most I can have. So I'm going to cap it at negative 113.2. And the units are joules per Kelvin. We don't include the mole here because that's what you were timesing by. You were timesing by your moles, so mole and mole cancels out. So in this case, we have negative 113.2 joules per Kelvin, and that's your change in entropy. And we guesstimated correctly. It was a negative value. And that's it. What do you think? I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And I hope you all are doing great out there. Keep studying hard. Good luck on your future tests and quizzes. I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.